safety. <laughs> I'm be looking at this chart while you driving, man. I ain't gonna uh, drive. I ain't gonna be looking at it when I get inside. But God damn, man, I'm pissing. All right, I'm about to go ahead and hit it, bro. So, uh, what I did was I called Blue Apron out earlier, and well, I didn't call it. I didn't call it as an official trade signal. Uh, what I did, we can go to the group. What I did, where's my channel? So what I did was I sent it at 9.56, this is central. So 10.56 um, Eastern, I said, no, aprons may be headed to break out soon, right? It was at $6.57. I'll send this on a daily chart, okay? I sent another alert at 10.41 saying that it's breaking out. And then I asked if anybody decided to trade that. And you see 10 people said, yeah. 45 folks said no. I guess some of these people did or didn't. I don't know. So let's go back to the chart. So this is what I saw. This is why, um, and I did, I personally did trade it. I just didn't call it. Um, so y'all can boo me if y'all want. But this is what I saw. This is why I took the trade. Um, and I'll also explain why I didn't call it out as a full trade. So what I was looking at is, Breaking down different time frames, we see on the one hour, uh, Blue Apron has had these this support trend line formed, and we're looking at that support trend line being formed because of touch one, touch two, touch three, and then this form, this one just came after the move happened, right? But this just confirmed the trend line support, uh, and you kind of got this little halfway mark right there. Cool. So while I was looking at taking the trade is we have our clearly established resistance right here at about 690. Uh, we see high over here, 685, high right here, 693. Okay. So when we come in a little closer, we see that inside of this pattern we have with these with this trend line, um, like I mentioned earlier, one of the reasons why I don't use, um, or one of the things I found additionally why I don't use indicators like that is because I can predict what's gonna happen rather than waiting for it to happen first and then moving after the fact, All right? Because for price, you know, indicators being based off of price and volume, price and volume has to occur first for the indicator to print any type of point, right? Any data point. But if I can look at it ahead of time, before it prints, I can already say, this is what it's looking like it's about to do, you know, and I can go off of that. So when I zoomed in, you see, we're holding this as a clear resistance, right? Clear resistance area right here. Let me zoom in some more. Put this back. Ooh. So we see we have a rejection here, rejection here, rejection here. Okay. Rejection here as well. All right. So let's go into the five so we can see it a little more cleaner. All right. So if we have these rejections, Right, we have not had a bar close above this level. Okay. Hey Joe, stop it. Uh, one question. When you say rejection, yeah. When you see that rejection in the middle that one of us waved from that that resistance line, why do you consider that a real rejection? When it didn't even get that close to that um that um supply zone up there. You, you talking about there. up here? No, go back to I don't know what time frame you was on. But you were showing the rejections, and it was one that was way down at the bottom. Then you get close to that arm um, line. Yeah, that one. This one, you seven. you don't see the wick. Okay. It wicked into it. Okay. Yeah, so you can't see the wick if my my mouse is over this, but yeah, it wicked into that and rejected. How many rejections in that? Three. Yep. So we take it back down to the five. Once we got that full close in this level, right? So again, we talk about the, the retest. So we broke above and closed in here. And then we came back and retested the intraday. Intraday, we had a trend line as well, right? Bounce, 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 right? Trend line support. Cool. And we have this level here. So it's just all, it's a bunch of levels. 
So we came, broke above, retested this level that was previously resistance, treated as support, which means that we're moving up, all right? We're holding this uptrend. And then this is, so this is where I sent the alert out to the group uh, right around here because we got that close above this range. Uh, so the target was this original resistance. And somebody asked in the chat, like, how do you know when to exit? Uh, I just covered that in another training. I think it was yesterday or Saturday, Saturday's training. But another way is just target points, right? I know price comes up here and shoots back down. That's clearly shown that price has a history of coming up here and shooting back down. So once it gets up here, I'm like, well, normally it shoots back down. So that's my target. That's my exit. All right. And in that move, in that move from the actual breakout above the highest point over here to the target, that's a 7% move that occurred within an hour. All right. Um, and so that was part of, to get to the point of me not making it a, a official call out, um, part of that was I knew it was going to move fast and it was going to be a bunch of, I ain't get in, should I get in? Is it too late? So that's why I sent the chart. I'm like kind of a, hey, do what you want. <laughs> so. Bop, bop, bop. What else? What else? Well, yeah, Eric, that's how you can plan out exits. There's different ways you can exit, bro. You can have profit targets. You can use trailing stops. I use trailing stops a lot. Um, I prefer not to do profit targets by percentages unless I'm scalping because I'd rather not cap my profit potential. All right. So if we were like taking this trade and we were like, yo, it's breaking out. My target is 10% gain. Like you would have missed all this, you know? So I try not to um, cap myself on potential profit, but I want to maximize my profit potential. And then with the trail and stop, you know, you're minimizing your loss because as it continues to move up, I'm moving my stop loss up. So one of the things I do um, is a two candle low trailing stop. <clears throat> where once I'm up, you know, 10%, I'm not going to get out the trade until the next candle makes a low that's lower than the last two candles low. All right. So what that looks like is every candle is low. All right, it becomes a new stop loss level for me. All right, so right here, this candle broke the previous candle's low, but it didn't break the second, right? So two candles, so I'm still in, right? And now I just reestablish, and we go on and we continue. So that's another way you can stay in. Uh, but this is what I do when I'm trading, sitting at the computer, because I can just sit here and watch every candle print. Again, another example of two candle low on this candle that shoots below this previous low, I'm staying in because it hasn't broken the candle of two previous candles, just one, right? Which ultimately leads to an exit right here. And so if you exit right here, using that basis, oh, sorry, your exit's right here because this is where it broke low, uh, then you've also maximized profit. Right. And that's allowed you to exit before the decline. So it's really hard to call an exact top, a super pre precise top. Um, but you can get real close to it by doing things like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So all them picture day, all them picture day um supports, um support zones. I love what you mean. No, nah, not all of them. Not all of them. These red ones was all just trailing stops. Once I got in the trade. Okay. All yeah. right. What other questions we got? About 15 more minutes.
15 more minutes. Tom was like thinking today. Hey, hey Jordan, I got a question for you. I'm gonna keep the next question 15 minutes up. Hey, on your I don't know if I advise you this, but I don't know. You draw your uh supply, um, your I um, mean your resistance and support zones on, on what time frame? Is it still the one minute or do you go? It depends on what I'm trading. Not the stock that I'm trading, but it depends on if I'm scalping or if I'm day trading. If I'm right, to put it in perspective again, we talk about logical thinking if i'm planning on holding a trade for two weeks a one minute supply zone don't matter mm. right so okay. so that's the same logic i apply to it. if i'm trading and i'm scalping something i plan on being in less than five ten minutes then my stuff is going to be on the five minute and one minute oh uh, if i'm looking at maybe holding it throughout the day now i'm looking at one hour 30 minute so I try to just hit the main points, um, you know, so regardless of time frame, I try to make sure I hit the main points. But yeah, if I'm scalping, bro, I'm not looking at, I don't even look at daily levels when I'm scalping. I just look at one minute. Yeah, show, show me, show me, since we're recording, show me how you would do it on a lower time frame, like if you just scalping. Show me how you, uh, on, a chart, on a clear chart, yeah. on how you would be doing it doing that at that time time period. So we take it back. Yeah, let's see if that moves too bad. All right, so I'm just identifying these levels. So that's one. I'm trend lining this. All right, we have another zone right here. We have one, two, three, four rejections. We get to break above, come back, show the retest here. It broke through, retested that again. Now it's holding this level that we laid out before. Broke, retested this one, retested this one, retested this one, All right? And so now it broke back through. So that's how I'm looking at it. I'm gonna lay this level out. Now we broke through that one. Came back and retested this level again. So these are just intraday levels. I mean, once I get, once I get two, I like to get at least two um, bounces or touches off a certain level. Then I'm, then I'm like, all right, cool. That's gonna hold. So now you'll play that as a break above one of them levels. So yeah, so it broke out and then it came and retested, right? Yeah. So that retest is where you get in and then mm -hmm. you push through and you can have your first target be here, this previous level. Second mm -hmm. target is right here. So that plays out like textbook. Breakout, retest, continue, first target hit, second target hit, and that rejected just like it rejected a bunch of times over here. All right. And you can say the same thing. On a high time frame. Exactly. It's all the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the same. Yeah, yeah. So you get a couple of touches. Now you playing that range and seeing how it react once it get back to that level. So if it rejects, so like it, like it was a long week, go through it, that'll, that'll be called a rejection. Yeah. So you're looking to go, go push from there. If you see it rejected that area a few times. You'll be start thinking, okay, this this area ain't, ain't this is a resistance level that's that's being rejected. So now a person can be thinking more. That's good. That's what is it listed as? Uh, when doing the trail and stop, I'm about to mute. Debout. Um, when you trail, when trailing, it's um I use a stop market order, right? So if you don't know your order types, definitely you want to learn your order types because those matter a lot when you're trading. Um, but a stop market order, a stop order is set to trigger once the price hits a certain level, right? A market order means 
feel me right now, right? At current market price. So a stop market order means if the price hits this price, fill my order, right? Usually to the downside is your stop uh, sell order. So if I'm doing a trail and stop and I'm doing it based off percentages, if I get into a trade at $1 of premium or 100, right? Uh, when it costs $100, once I'm up 20%, if I'm using a trailing stop loss of 10%, I'm setting a stop market order on my option contract at 1.10 premium, which would be locking in a 10% profit if the option drops back to that stop price. Once it drops to that stop price, it triggers as a market order. Mm -hmm. Eric, uh, for, for back testing and studying, you can use SPY, uh, but just tr look at whatever you're gonna be trading. A lot of a lot of stuff you want to make sure that is based on what you're going to be trading, really, because uh, certain strategies that I've tested work great on certain stocks and work horribly on other stocks. So you don't want to create a strategy um, or find a strategy, look up a strategy, whatever, and just randomly apply it to stocks all across different uh, across different sectors and stocks that have different betas and stocks that are less volatile and more volatile, right? You want to test for this strategy, how does it work with Apple, right? Um, just like how if you was dating somebody, you know, and you're used to dating folks, you wouldn't approach every person you want to date the exact same way. Once you know how they respond to a certain love language, for example, then you would try to talk to them or interact with them in that love language, right? Some people got the same, some people don't. So, I would treat the stocks the same way. You know, if you're testing an RSI-based strategy, if you're testing and studying whatever chart patterns, like just chart patterns alone, you can do SPY. But if you're going to be testing indicator-based strategies, I'll, I would definitely do whatever is going to be something you're going to really trade. Why do I think that is different stocks require different strategies? For those reasons that I said, um, some stocks are more volatile, some stocks are less, some wow. stocks uh, have just different reactions to the market, right? There's stocks that when the COVID news came out, for example, there were stocks that shot up, you know, there were stocks that went to zero, you know, or crashed, or a lot of companies that went bankrupt. So you want to test, even with sectors, um, and how money ro rotates in and out of these sectors, you want to test whatever it is to be sure that it's suitable for that specific underlying equity. So just, be, just being thorough, right? It's just being thorough. Um, and I've tested like just simple RSI stuff. You know, the RSI is oversold. Usually it's supposed to bounce back to being, you know, overbought and it'll go back down. But when I looked at um, on a one hour time frame, trading oversold, values on the rsi back to overbought it was i can't remember the names i did this i did this test in march um i was running those tests in march but it was just certain stocks like i think amd performed very matter of fact i think i made a watch list yep so i made a watch list out of stocks that performed well on rsi bounces um, on the one hour chart. And there was a bunch of them that were horrible, like Snapchat. No, Snapchat was good. Um, so it was just certain ones. And I saw like social media stocks for some reason, Snapchat and Twitter, no, they did good. But I think more industrial stocks did bad, you know? So after that, I really stopped concerning myself with why uh, to some degree and just focused on how do I apply this information and how do I use it to make myself better? You know, and why does play into that to a degree. But then I'm like, well, shoot, I know it works. So I'm going to run it. The public news destroy a strategy? Um, for the moment, right? So it depends on the type of strategy. Um, like Facebook had that news. There's a couple of examples that come to mind. Facebook had that news when they released like 
all these people, they told everybody they were selling it, like their data, like you weren't really private on Facebook and they were selling all your data to everybody. I don't remember the exact day that happened, but maybe y'all remember that. Um, and Facebook dropped, like it dropped for a couple of days and then it just went back to regular business, all right? Wayfair had that thing come out about them doing child trafficking. And the stock kept going up. Now I remember that the stock, the stock didn't even go down after that stuff came out. Yeah, you would have thought. But you know, so news can affect it. Um, but not all the time. But when you're looking at your strategy, news happening is a one-time occurrence, right? You're not gonna get wayfair child trafficking every month, right? You're gonna have it happen. Is going to react in that moment, and then whatever happens after that will happen. Um, but the company is still fundamentally the same. People are still going to be buying and selling it the same. And the reason these companies can have these scandals and have these allegations and do whatever um, is because at the end of the day, you're investing in the company and their profitability, right? People are investing in Wayfair to make money. You buy stock to make money. And so if Wayfair is a company that's consistently increasing their cash flow and consistently com increasing their assets. You know, their expenses are going down once they've kind of balanced out. They are a money-making company. So people are going to keep buying them. Investors are going to keep investing. They don't care what they're doing, right? So news can throw something off in the moment, but it wouldn't make you throw away your whole strategy. Well, things like power statements make puts profitable with spy and other companies yeah so that the fed as well right all of those things that occur uh throughout the course of the months throughout the course of the days the weeks they do have those short-term reactions all right and so that's where you have some variance in your strategy uh, and you of course you have exit rules and things of that nature right your strategy is going to have sizing rules it should have entry and exit criteria um, and so in the moment, if, or actually it should also have avoiding trade criteria, right? So you'll see in the chat that Zay will say, Powell speaks today at 2 p.m. I'm not trading nothing until after, All right? For Zay, how he trades, he doesn't want to trade on the same day that there's a big meeting that can shake the market. You'll see me say, Powell speak at 2 p.m. So I'm about to trade all the way up till 1. And that's me, right? Um, I don't like trading stocks based on technicals if they have earnings coming up. So if it's a stock that has earnings coming up tomorrow and I'm like, oh, it's support, resistance, bull flag, whatever, looks great. Oh, they got earnings tomorrow? It's a no-go. If I'm trading it for that reason. However, if I'm trading it on an earnings-based strategy, then I'll do that. Uh, so it's just looking at those events and you know they come and they go. And you have to make sure that you strategize for them or to avoid them based on whatever works for you. And you build out your strategy. No scalping, swing, day trading. So Hold we're using up. Oh, yeah, Deshaun, Deshaun, I don't know if you know that you keep direct messaging me these questions. But um, so using news is very important depending on how you trade. If you're trading and you're trading the last five minutes, News don't matter, right? No, you good. You can be in. I'm just saying. Uh, so me, like I've been on Zoom and been quoted saying I don't look at CPI data, inflation numbers, at uh, non-farm payrolls. I don't look at what the interest rates are doing because my trades last a day at the most, and a lot of times my trades last. 10 15 minutes so non-farm payrolls coming out doesn't affect my five minute trade right but if you're holding something for three weeks you know the fed raising interest rates by 75 basis points is going to matter because that's going to affect the market over the course of that time frame so it's just about looking at it based on yourself and you can have news-based strategies Right, you know when stocks get upgraded, when stocks have earnings, um, if stocks or if certain companies are releasing new products, new services, whatever, then there might be 
some follow up with investors on that so you can trade the volatility. All right. And you had a question. You had a question, T? I just hit the unmute. Yeah, you just, there you go. What do I think about funded option accounts like Apex? I have no personal experience with it. So I don't know. I'm familiar with funded Forex accounts, um, but I have never looked into Apex. So I don't have yeah. any. They got, um, they got option funded accounts. There's actually a, pretty, a lot of prop firms that have option funded accounts. They let you trade all the money. You 10 days to win an account. You trade all day long. Um, I was just trying to see if you knew anything about winning any one of the accounts because I was going to try it. Try it with the team so I can be able to pay for my lifetime membership. Try it, bro. Uh, like I said, I, I have no personal experience with it, and I'm not one to speak on stuff I don't know about. I ain't never did. So, hey, whoever, I, will, uh, I ain't mean to cut you off, John. Whoever just said they trying to pay for their lifetime, Jordan got this challenge going on. It's a 1K challenge. If you want to jump in and learn, take it up and then just pay for your uh, lifetime. Right, right, right. And that's really what I'm on, you feel me? But I, I'm kind of into the using other people's capital thing. So, because I'm really starting this with nothing. I ain't got nothing to hide. I can't sugarcoat it for you. So, I'm. I done learned everything about the market that I basically can. I got into the group and started learning more. Like, I'm a price action Elliott with you, trader. So, uh, actually sitting here learning this and being on the um, Zoom with you guys is helping me learn how to trade options. Because I really know nothing about it. I was a Forex trader. Got you. Glad to have you, bro. <laughs> For sure. I just hit up one of my dudes. Um, I got a guy who he he trades or he did trade for a firm. Um, I mean, I got somebody else I could text too. So like I said, I don't know nothing about it, but I'm going to see if I can get some information. Um, and I'll drop it in the chat later on if I get something on it. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. So, I got to learn how to put in puts, calls. I'm starting all the way from scratch with this. Because, you know, Forex is it's a little more difficult than what I see from him. But it's actually, you know, it's freestyle trading. So, yeah. I'm I'm good at being a loose cannon. So, with this right here, I'm trying to learn a little discipline with my trading. But. I can trade crypto and everything. Like I, I actually be on a few of D Wiz Zoom calls, so he's very informational on crypto. Like you, you really got one of the best teams. You really got one of the best teams I done came across. Appreciate you, bro. Have you uh watched any like recordings, the trainings on options so far? Um. I, so I just got my laptop and my phone back connected to each other, and I still got another phone I got to fix, but I'm definitely going to be watching some of those recordings tonight. But, yeah, right. go, through the, uh, go through this section right here, like this recorded. You can just click on this, and it's going to pull up like all the classes we done taught. So you got your whole little lessons. I usually go through all that stuff. Okay, okay. But, all right, we just hit five o'clock. I'm gonna hit this last question. Um, Mike said, I talked about this, but I'm setting stop loss. What strategy do I use? Um, when do I set it? Is it at the time of buying? So when I'm setting my stops, when I'm actively looking at the charts, I'm looking at them actively, you know, so I'm trailing stops based on price. Really, 
I cover. I actually covered all this on Saturday, so I don't want to be that guy to be like, "Go oh, watch what I did on Saturday." It goes into more detail, but basically, I'm just looking at the levels, looking at how stuff moves, and then as I go up ten percent, I move my stop loss up ten percent too. All right. So if I'm up ten percent, I'm gonna set a stop loss at break even. I'm up twenty percent. I set a stop loss at ten percent profit, and as it goes, I just keep moving it up. But I did just cover that in Saturdays in a lot more detail uh, with more ways of doing it. And as a wrap, so I'm going to post this. Uh, we start recording some of it. But if y'all got questions, always shoot them in the chat. Appreciate y'all coming out. Appreciate it. We out.